in my view, I think we're going through a time where we're, we are or we will be really shifting the way that we think about what liberal arts is as a, or are as a model. And to some degree, we're relying on some concepts from uh, a bygone age. The traditional model of the liberal arts, befitting a, something from a bygone age, is the Model T. And what the Model T is, is it says, the liberal arts are across the top, it's your breadth. You take a course here, you take a course here, you take a course here, you take a course here. So you walk across the top of this T and you're sampling a lot of courses in different disciplines. So you're finding out a little bit about what anthropology does and English does, and, uh, uh, theater arts does and so on. So you're getting that, that broad distribution. And then there's the stem of the T. That's the, the, the depth, that's your major. So you're getting the breadth and you're getting the depth. And traditionally, that's been the way that people have actually talked about uh, the liberal arts um, in, a, in a, actually a specific way, calling it the T shape. Uh, but even if you don't use that, um, that language, that's kind of the way that we've tended to talk about it. Well, that's an old transportation mode, the Model T. And I also think it's an old way of thinking about, about the liberal arts. So let me suggest another uh, way of thinking about it. Now, I don't know why I'm comparing the liberal arts to air travel, because it seems like, why would you ever want to compare yourself to air travel, <laughs> given how much people don't like traveling by air? But I'm going to use it anyway. So the hub and spoke model in air travel is an extraordinarily democratizing model, because it gets you from anywhere to anywhere. You don't have to have a direct flight somewhere. You have all these hubs and all these spokes coming out. You can come to Minneapolis, and from Minneapolis, you can get almost anywhere, whether it's uh, directly from here or through connecting, uh, connecting flights. I'm, I'm thinking more of what we do as being like the hub and spoke model. So those hubs, you can think of them as interdisciplinary questions, or you can think of them as the, the majors that a student might have. You can kind of go, go either way with that. And what our students are doing is they're diving in at some point in this uh, hub and spoke, and then they're moving out to, to other areas, and they're bringing that back to their, let's say, to this interdisciplinary question that's in the center, or to their major, maybe that's what it is, and then they're diving out again to do some more work, coming back, and they keep moving in and around this particular, uh, this particular web. So our students are not walking across the top of a T in a fairly random form, unconnected to anything, they're actually moving through this sort of space of a, of a web, of a network, of a hub and spoke, and pulling things, we hope, they're pulling things together across these fields. The Model T is very much a bunch of separate disciplines, not necessarily talking to each other. This model is more trying to get disciplines to talk to each other and trying to get students to see the connections. So we're, we're, I think where we're moving is to try to help students find ways to do what we're starting to do already in our research, which is connect people up from various disciplines. I think most of you who've taught have probably had the experience of a student coming to you and saying, well, this was so amazing. What we talked about in class today is exactly related to what I was talking about in this other class I had three days ago. And of course, we stand there and we say, well, that's great. And we also realize, totally unplanned and completely an accident, but I'm glad that it worked and you had that experience. I think what we'll move is that we want to try to create more of those opportunities for students to have these connecting aha moments that get them so excited and so passionate about their, uh, about their knowledge. It gives them a much richer map of the knowledge universe, I think. It gives them a better way to think about how the analytical tools of different disciplines uh, fit together. And as I said, I do think it keeps them more excited about the work that they're doing uh, in, the, uh, in the liberal arts. Now our career readiness work actually provides a bit of a model for thinking about this because our career readiness work, while we certainly respect what the majors bring to the table, the career readiness work is also a liberal arts readiness model. It is what is your liberal arts advantage more so than what is your specific advantage from being in major A, B, C, or D. So we've already started to move down that road to some degree at least through uh, through the career readiness uh, initiative. And I think we know how to do this work from a research point of view. I'm not as sure we know how to, what to do 
in terms of our outreach and in terms of our uh, teaching in thinking about this kind of this kind of model. One thing I could imagine that we're doing, for example, is we're developing far more modular courses for students and short-term courses for students. So a student who's interested in a question can go out, take a course for three weeks or whatever it is to get some additional background on something and then move on and do something, do something else. So in my case, for example, if a student wanted to take a, learn about third parties or wanted to learn about social movements, well, as much as I want to believe that every usable form of knowledge comes in 15-week chunks, two dams a week, it may not necessarily be the, be the case. It could be that they could get perfectly what they need actually in three weeks or five weeks rather than going through a whole 15-week class. Now, they won't get all of the other scaffolding I would put around a discussion of third parties, but they won't get everything, but they'll get that piece. And maybe they can bring that and tie it into something else that they're interested about. So maybe we would do more modular courses or short-term short uh, courses. Maybe this is an opportunity to take uh, advantage of technology for some short courses as well. Could be online, for example. Maybe we start to think about creating streams or themes of, of courses. It's not majors, not minors necessarily, but a set of courses that we're encouraging students to think about taking. Some might be a full 15 weeks, some might be three weeks, uh, and so on. But I think we'll have to rethink the way that we, or over time, this isn't a tomorrow kind of thing, but over time we'll have to rethink the way that we're, uh, what we're offering to students and how we can do that. And as soon as you start saying any of this kind of thing to anyone at the university who has to deal with classroom management, their hair starts on fire and they say it can't be done. It won't be easy, but I'm quite sure it can be done. There's a lot of smart people, we can figure it out. Uh, but that does suggest there's also a place for technology in at least starting some of that because you don't have to have the same uh, physical meeting space to do that kind of work.